In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a forest plot just like this one by using Microsoft Excel. As always, if you do find this content useful, please let me know by leaving a like on the video or drop me a comment below. Now let's get straight into Excel and get started. So I already have some example data within my Excel sheet. In my first column, I have added the placeholders for the study names. Usually in forest plots, these are the names of the first author of the paper followed by et al. In the next column, I have the study effect sizes. There are many types of effect sizes you can use. The most common are usually odds ratios, hazard ratios, or mean difference. For my effect size, I just have the odds ratio for each study that I'm interested in. Then I have the lower and upper 95% confidence intervals for each of my studies. Now I'm ready to create my forest plot. To do this, I will highlight all of the data in the first and second columns so that is the study names and the effect size, which is the odds ratio for my example. Then I will go to insert. Then in the charts area, I will select to insert a column or bar chart. Then I will select the 2D clustered bar that is horizontal. I can now see a bar chart has been created. Sometimes when you have negative data values, your labels may overlap your bars. For example, if I change the first value to negative 1.9 instead, you can see the issue. If this is the case, you can move the labels to the left of the axes. And to do this, you would right click on the labels on the graph and select Format Axis. This will open a new sidebar to the right called Format Axis. Scroll down and select Labels, then change the label position to Low. So if you did have some issues with your labels, hopefully they should now sit to the left of the axis, just like mine here. I'll revert my first data point back to 1.9. Next, we need to create a new column of data in our sheet, which will be used to know where to place the scatter plot points on our forest plot. This will make more sense shortly. For now, I will create a new column and call this position. Then starting at 0.5, I will go down in intervals of one until I reach the last study, just like this. The next step is to add this onto the graph. To do this, right click on the graph and go to select data. Then you want to add a new series. For now, just leave the series name blank and do not change the series value. Then click OK and OK again. Next, we need to change this new orange bar to be a scatter plot instead of a bar chart. To do this, right click on the orange bar and select Change Series Chart Type. For the second series we just created, change this to be a scatter and then click OK. Now you can see a single orange scatter point is on the graph. Next, we need to add in the effect size data for each of the studies. To do this, right click on the point and then go to select data. Select series two and then click edit. For the X values, you want to enter the effect sizes. So this will be the odds ratio data for me. So I'll click the up arrow and then click and drag on my odds ratio data. Then I'll press the enter key on my keyboard to add this data in. Now for the Y values, you want to select the values in the position column we recently created. Basically, these values just specify how high up the Y axes the scatter points should sit. So again, I will select the up arrow and click and drag to highlight the position values. Then I'll press the enter key. I will click OK and then OK again. So now we can see that the effect sizes have been added. Next, we can remove the blue bars as we don't need to see these. Because we still want to see the study names for our labels to the left of the axis, we cannot simply click on the bars and delete them. Instead, click on any blue bar to select all of them, and then go to Format and change the Shape Fill to No Fill. This way, we can still see our study labels to the left without having to see the blue bars. Another thing we can do is to remove the axis to the right, which corresponds to the positions, as we don't need to see this. To delete this, simply click on the right axis and press delete on the keyboard. Next, let's add our error bars onto the plot. In this case, it is the 95% confidence intervals. Before we can do this, we need to calculate the difference between the effect size, so the odds ratio for my example, and the lower and upper 95% confidence interval values. So I will insert two new columns on my sheet by right clicking on a column and selecting insert. I will call the columns graph lower 95% CI and graph upper 95% CI. Then in the first cell for the new graph lower 95% CI column, 
I need to calculate the difference between the odds ratio and the lower 95% confidence interval value. So I will enter equals, then I will click on the cell containing the odds ratio for the first study, then I will subtract and click on the cell containing the lower 95% confidence interval for that same study. Then I'll press the enter key on my keyboard. I will then select this cell and drag the small green dot in the lower right hand corner of the cell down to fill in the same process for the rest of my studies. I now need to repeat this, but for the upper 95% confidence interval data. So in a new cell, I will enter equals, but this time I will select the cell containing the upper 95% confidence interval value first for my first study. Then I will subtract the cell containing the odds ratio for that same study, and then press the enter key. Again, I will drag this formula down to repeat this for the rest of my studies. So now we're ready to add this data onto the error bars. To do this, select any of the scatter points to select them all, then go to chart design, add chart element, error bars, and then select more error bars options. You will see that it looks a bit of a mess at the minute, but don't worry about that. We don't need the vertical error bars, so select one of them to select them all, and then press delete on your keyboard to remove them. Now we should be left with just the horizontal error bars. Select one of the error bars to select them all. Then in the format error bars sidebar to the right, scroll down and select custom from the error amount. Now click on the specify value button. For the positive error values, you want to highlight the new graph upper 95% data we just created. So I will select the up arrow and then select my values. Then I'll press the enter key. Then you want to repeat this for the negative error value, but this time select your new graph lower 95% CI data that we just created. Then once this has been entered, press OK. As you can see, we now have the correct error bars on our points. There are a few more things we can do before we finish. The first is to change the color of the scatter points to black, as traditionally forest plot points are solid black circles. To do this, right click on a point on the graph and then select Format Data Series. In the right sidebar, select Fill and Line. Then click on Marker. Under Fill, change the color to black. And under this, change the border color to black too. Another thing I'm going to do is to remove the Y axis border. To do this, I will click to select the Y axis and then go to Format, Shape Outline, and then select No Outline. I will also remove the major grid lines by selecting a one and pressing delete on my keyboard. Next, I will add an outline to my X axis so this becomes visible. To do this, I will select the X axis and then go to Format, Shape Outline, and then I will select a black color. I will also adjust the X axis by right clicking on it and then selecting Format Axis. In the Format Axis sidebar, I will change the major units to be one. And if I scroll down, I will also change to show the major tick marks on the outside. And lastly, it is common for forest plots that present odds ratios to add a vertical solid line that passes through one. There is no easy way to do this on Excel, so the best method I've found is to just manually add a vertical line yourself by going to Insert, Shapes, and then you want to select a straight line. A tip here is that when you're clicking and dragging to add the line onto your graph, keep your finger on the Shift key to ensure the line will be straight. Once you have the right length, you can then move it to be positioned at x equals 1. And then you can also change the shape outline to black. And there we have the finished product. Now you know how to create a forest plot by using Microsoft Excel. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.